Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of ETV News. I'm Lauren Zenzi. And I'm Matt Malillo. The family of Sandy Hook shooting victim and ECSU alum, Vicki Soto, have trademarked her name. Over the past two years, her name has been repeatedly misused on social media. The trademark will allow the Soto family to manage and stop any misuse of Vicki's name. The worst offenders are hoaxers who are claiming that the Sandy Hook shooting was staged and the trademark will make it easier to shut down imposter accounts and set her family at ease. Some sad news came just last night after reporters indicated that longtime 60 Minutes correspondent Bob Simon was killed in a New York car crash. On the West Side Highway, when the car rear-ended another vehicle and in traffic, and the car crashed into barriers that separated north and south back, southbound traffic. In a statement released by 60 Minutes executive producer Jeff Fagan, he said, quote, Bob was a reporter's reporter, and he was he was a reporter's reporter. He was driven by curiosity that took him all over the world covering all sorts of stories. All of us at CBS News and particularly at 60 Minutes will miss him very much, end quote. Simon was 73 years old. Are you running out of memory on your devices? Well, you are actually in luck. Google's launch of their new security checkup tool is giving users two gigabytes of cloud storage. To get this extra storage, all you have to do is review your computer's security settings. The extra storage can be used for Google Drive, Google Email, and Google Plus. All you have to do is log into Google and go to your account settings. NBC nightly news anchor Brian Williams has been suspended from the program for six months after fabricated details about a 2003 trip to Iraq. Earlier this month, Williams attended a Rangers game with a veteran who he claimed helped to protect him when the helicopter he was in was shot down by enemy fire. After other soldiers challenged these facts, NBC conducted an investigation leading up to the event eventual suspension since Williams left. The nightly news weekend anchor Lester Holt has filled his position and will continu continue to do so for the following months. Cities and towns all across Connecticut are starting to see the effects of all the snow the state has been getting. Many locations are seeing their supplies of salt absolutely diminish, which may cause problems with any snow we may see in the remaining weeks of winter. Most of Connecticut's salt supply comes from the Gateway Terminal in New Haven, making it difficult for some towns to restock their supply in a timely manner. So be careful when driving out there. Comedy Central took a major hurt hit recently. Longtime political comedian Jon Stewart announced to the audience at his Tuesday's taping that he is stepping down as host of The Daily Show. Stewart has been the host since 1999 and has brought laughter to millions of people during his time on the television. He is expected to leave the show later this year. There is no word on who will take his place. Stewart has been the heart and soul of Comedy Central for over a decade now, providing jeers at all things political throughout the duration of the show. He is beloved by so many and, will all, and we all sure will cherish these last few months that Jon Stewart is on Comedy Central. It has been a clinic for viruses this winter season so far, and UConn students can certainly agree. Over the past several days, there have been quite a few cases of flu-like symptoms. This past week, UConn had seen 10 students going to the hospital after exhibiting vomiting and other flu-like symptoms. Some believe that it could be caused from food at UConn's dining halls, but the university doesn't believe that that's the case. Quote, there is no current evidence from evaluations of the students who have been treated that their illness was caused by food consumption, end quote, says campus officials. Students were reportedly fine after just 24 hours. The third time was the charm for SpaceX, which launched the Deep Space Climate Observatory with it, its Falcon 9 rocket. Liftoff took place at 6.03 p.m. on Wednesday from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. SpaceX founder Elon Musk said the drone ship left to avoid a mega storm and that the chances of the rocket survival were less than 1%. The soft landing was a success during Discover is designed to provide full disk imagery of Earth. This can lead to improved climate prediction models. Fans of Spider-Man can rejoice as the Web Slinger will be joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Marvel broke the news on their website Monday revealing that they will collaborate with Sony Pictures, which owns the rights to Spider-Man. 
Doug Belgrad, president of Sony Pictures Entertainment Movie Group, went on to say, quote, this new level of collaboration is the perfect way to take Peter Parker's story into the future, end quote. What can fans expect? Under the deal, Spider-Man will appear in a Marvel film followed by Sony releasing the next installment in their $4 billion franchise on July, 18, July 28, 2017. Michael Litton, chairman and CEO of Sony Pictures, said that, quote, this is the right decision for the franchise, for our business, for our Marvel, and for our fans, end quote. With news like this, Sony and Marvel will certainly keep fans swinging in suspense. And we'll be right back with this week's editorial. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Oh, oh, all in together now. We can make it better now. Come on, can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. We roll it up. Cause we know how to jump. We roll it out. Cause we know how to skate. We'll cut it down. We cut it down. We know what to eat. We'll swap it out. We eat healthy stuff. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. Can we do it? Do it. Yeah, you know that we can. Today's a good day to grab your kids and hang out with them for an hour. Dance, walk, play a sport, or cook a healthy meal. Because just moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. We'll ball it up. Because we know how to hoop. We'll mess around. Because we know how to play. We'll drop it down. Because we know how to dance. We'll veg it up. Veg it veggie up. night and day. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. All in together now. We can make it better now. Search We Can to find doable tips and activities that you can use every day to keep you and your kids healthy. Do you like this top? It's so gay. Really? Yeah, it's totally gay. You know, you really shouldn't say that. Say what? Well, say that something's gay when you mean it's bad. It's insulting. What if every time something was bad, everybody said, oh, that so girl wearing a skirt as a top? Oh, you are. <laughs> Those are cute jeans, though. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Saunders with this week's editorial. So just take a second and close your eyes. Now, imagine this. You're a senior in high school again. You're on top of the world. You think the world is your oyster, and you want to kick its salty butt. But wait. Before you can kill it in college with your buddies, play Pong and go to class in sweatpants, you need to ace your SATs. Okay, now open your eyes. Is anyone else feeling panicked? Is that feeling a little bit too real? Yeah, I bet. Because the SATs are probably the most stressful thing we've encountered at that point in our young lives. But what did the SATs actually do for us except for give us early onset ulcers? How much of what is asked of us applicable to our college success? To be honest, I didn't do so great on my SATs. When I got my score back, my parents performed the sign of the cross and hoped to God that I'd find a rich husband. But the most perplexing thing about my SAT scores and my level of intelligence is they don't match up. I was a straight A student in high school and I'm a straight A student now. So my question is, how accurate are the SATs at measuring student aptitude in college and beyond? The test was first administered in 1926. It was based off an IQ test created by a French psychologist Alfred Binet. The test was used to identify slow learners, so teachers would know where their attention was needed in the classroom. The SATs now, according to the College Board, don't measure innate ability, they measured developed reasoning. Wayne Kamara, the director of the Office of Research at the College Board, said that students who read a lot both in and out of school are, most like, are more likely to do well in the SATs and in college. And his advice to prospective college students who are prepping for the SATs? read a lot and take rigorous academic courses. So let me, just, let me just think about this for a second. By fourth grade, I was reading at a college level. In high school, I was a straight A student. I took just about every AP course offered at my school and I succeeded in all of them. And I still consumed books like my life depended on it. 
but my SAT scores reflected those of a trained chimp who can only communicate through burping and sign language. I'm lost. I'm not here to brag about my scholastic accomplishments, I'm really not, but watching my little cousin stress, cram, and get premature gray hairs over the silly test is really making me wonder. Current studies show that the correlation between SAT scores and first year college grades is only 10 to 20% of the variation in first year GPAs. They're not an accurate measurement of long-term collegiate success. Standardized testing cannot take into account your creativity and your unique way of thinking. Everyone thinks in a different way. There are sometimes more than one answer to a question, but the SATs don't give you a chance to back up an alternative answer. It's their answer or no answer. The goal of standardized testing seems to be how well you can memorize and regurgitate inconsequential facts. In 2012, Ithaca College in New York allowed applicants to omit their SAT scores because they took notice of the studies that indicated that SATs only slightly predicted student success after high school. As a result, Ithaca received 4,000 additional applications that they would not have otherwise received. This led to the most diverse class in Ithaca's history. And as far as the average GPA of that freshman class, they were comparable to previous years, absolutely no change. So in conclusion, the SATs and all standardized tests for that matter are tools rather than ends. They are just a single piece of information that actually conceals the potential of the applicant more than it reveals. It's time to take a fresh creative look at the tool for measuring college success. Also, eliminate math from everything, just forever, just no more math. But that's all for this week's editorial. I'm Megan Saunders. Take it easy, Eastern, and have a wonderful, magical, long weekend. So I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Here we go. We're going we're gonna to make some juice. It's going to be good. She's excited. A little bit of kale. Please don't put this on line. I'm putting it all over the line. It's wet. It needs something. No, it'll go. Don't break my juicer. Looks good. You ready to try it? Come on, baby. Try Challenge it. your kids to be active and eat healthy. It's okay. okay. Like it. right. They might surprise you. I actually took another sip. You saw it? Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Join Eastern's cast of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland for a matinee show February 18th through the 22nd. Come enjoy a whimsical theater production at Schaefer Hall's Harry Hope Theater. All ages can experience a quirky adaptation of the story we all know and love. Call the Harry Hope box office to reserve your seats at 860-465-5123. Tickets are limited, so reserve now. Tuesday, February 17th, Pride Alliance is hosting their annual drag queen show, Love is a Drag. The show will start at 7 p.m. and will take place in the Betty Tipton Room here on Eastern's campus. There will be free food and beverages offered and performances from some of Connecticut's hottest drag performers. This event is free and open to the public, but make sure you get there early because seats fill up quickly. 
Eastern Connecticut State University's rugby team in conjunction with the University Center for Community Engagement hosted the fourth annual Plunge for Hunger in Lauder Park on February 7th to benefit the Covenant Soup Kitchen. About 800 members of the local community showed up to support the Covenant Soup Kitchen and 200 actually took the plunge themselves in the sub-freezing temperatures. So far, this year's plunge has raised approximately 32 thousand dollars which will be generously matched by the Jeffrey P. Austin Family Foundation. With the foundation's contributions approximately 64,000 has been raised so far. Aside from a few big donations much of this money came from small personal donations made by local community members. This week Andrew was in the student center to get some of get some feedback on student reactions to Super Bowl 49 between the New England Patriots and the Seattle Seahawks. Let's take a peek. Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Fitzgerald. I'm in the Student Center here at Eastern to ask a few questions about what people thought about the Super Bowl. Who'd you root for? Uh, Seahawks. Seahawks. Why is that? You hear about all the past uh, fans that talk, talk too much. They talk too much about it. So you don't like the Pats? Not at all. Not at all. I don't know if we can be friends then. Watch the Super Bowl? I did. Who'd you root for and why? Um, the Patriots because we live in New England. Good choice. I was rooting for the Patriots. Good choice. Why'd you root for them? Just felt like it. Uh, yeah, I'm not too big of a fan of the Seahawks, so go with the other team, I thought. Any particular team you're rooting for? Uh, not the Patriots. Why is that? I'm a Miami Dolphins fan. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, all the way up here, yeah. Seahawks. So Seahawks all the way? Uh, for the most part, yeah. Okay, who'd you root for? I rooted for the Seahawks. Any particular reason? I don't know. I don't like the Patriots. They actually sued my hometown, Montville, at one point. I'm a Giants fan, so... Well, I'm a Patriots fan, so I don't know. Sorry, they have to. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, what do you think of the last play of the game? Um, I think they should have given it to Marshawn Lynch, but, you know, such is life. But they didn't, so. Yeah, no. Beast Mode not, not coming in clutch. Yeah, not, no. not at all. Not okay, at all. okay. <laughs> what do you think of the final play? No, it was terrible. It was horrible. They uh, made a bad decision. No Beast Mode? No, not at all. They should have. They should have. They really messed up not running Marshawn in that, uh, that episode. Well, I'm happy, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You're lucky. You're lucky. What do you think of the final play of the game? It was crazy. It was literally crazy. I was so mad at the coach of the Seahawks because they could have just run the ball, but they didn't. They won. Any hey, the commercials you like? Um, I liked the one with Lindsay Lohan. That was definitely my favorite. Okay. It was funny. Right. The puppy one, the Bud White one, of course. That was cute. It was. Very cute. Um, well, we had some Patriots and Seahawks fans. Many interesting opinions and thoughts on the game. And obviously, they all can't wait for next year's Super Bowl. That's all from Student Center. I'm Andrew Fitzgerald with ETV News. Thanks, Andrew. Looks like Eastern is divided between the Seahawks and the Patriots. We hope you enjoyed the game. We can't wait for the 2015 season. On Friday, February 6th, CAB had his late, its late night event named Skaters Gonna Skate. Here, students were able to ice skate indoors. The synthetic ice was constantly watered down, so it kept its slippery surface. Students were also able to enjoy a live DJ, food, and hot chocolate. Make sure not to miss the next CAB late night. Quote, we are announcing the spring concert performer at the next late night on the 20th of February. End quote, said weekend coordinator Courtney Calloway. Check out CAB's Facebook and Twitter and the events calendar for future events. Fantastic Friday is approaching quickly. For all Eastern students interested in applying for an RA position on campus, this event will take place Friday, February 20th in the Student Center Theater. Make sure you come dressed to impress as this is your first opportunity to meet all the previous RAs and hall directors. The event will start at 3 p.m. and will continue until 7 p.m. Good luck to all that are applying. And we'll be right back with this weekend's update. Sports update. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks.
So, where are you going out tonight? I can't. My parents say I have to be home right after work. <sighs> That's so gay. Totally gay. Ugh, that is so Emma and Julia. Why are you saying that's so Emma and Julia? Well, you know, when something is dumb or stupid, you say that's so Emma and Julia. Who says that? Everyone. Imagine if who you are were used as an insult. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Matt, it's not the weekend yet. Just wait a second. I'm Nick Ackenfor with this week's sports update. Eastern Connecticut men's basketball team hosted UMass Boston Saturday afternoon. In a game where the Warriors only led by six at halftime, they went on a late run to win the game 78-61. Wednesday night, the Warriors hosted rival Keene State in what some would consider a Warrior Classic. Here are your highlights. Eastern and Keene State coming into this one. It's Matt Ozello starting things off with a putback. Ozello will get the ball again right here. Three-pointer, he's got it. Keene with an early lead. Here's Colin Jordan. He carried Eastern Connecticut in the first half as he lays it in and knocks down a three-pointer as well. But here goes Keene. Jeff Lund had a big game inside against the Eastern Bigs. Ozella, another three-pointer. Here's Jaquiel Edwards. He knocks it down. Lynn going to work again. And right before the half, here's Tom Doyle. Deep two-pointer. It's good. 44-32 at halftime. It's the Tarchi Brown show now. Brown in the second half and one count it. Here's Brown again, top of the key, three-pointer, bang, he's got it. Eastern Connecticut going on a run, Brown again and one. They're pumped up, Eastern coming back. Brown wants another three, why not? Add it on, Eastern cutting it close. Colin Jordan with the steal here, he lays it up and in on the break. Eastern now only down by a couple as Michael Thomas Ciro lays it in, a 59-58 game, not anymore. Tarchi Brown drives, lays it in, another and one for Brown. He keeps going at it. Why not? Brown, the freshman, off the board. But Keene did not fall back. They laid in there. Here's Ozella again. 75-74, then comes the call of the game. 18 on the shot clock. Jordan, guarded by Hamill. They bring a screen, it slips off. Yarborough, a three-pointer. It's good! Brandon Yarborough, a senior, knocks down the three. Eastern 78, Keene 74. Tom Doyle and Keene State have one more chance. Doyle drives Lomain with the steal. Eastern Connecticut wins this one 82 to 76. Eastern Connecticut kept its first place ranking in the conference, in the Little East Conference. And Eastern Connecticut now will face UMass Dartmouth in a huge conference matchup this Saturday at UMass Dartmouth. Eastern Connecticut women's basketball took on UMass Boston this past weekend. And Eastern really had a big game throughout. They won the game 66 to, uh, 66 to 38 as they blew out the Beacons. Then Eastern Connecticut took on Keene State last night, and boy, was it a different story. Here are your highlights. Eastern coming into this one first in the conference, Keene in fourth. Keene State early on with the lay-in here. And again, Cognetta driving to the basket with the right hand. She lays it in. Julie DePoy can't hit. It was a story for Eastern Connecticut. They could not hit shots. Rytrowski does there as Eastern led by four at halftime. Second half different. DePoy can't finish the lay-in. Rytrowski wide open. Come on. She can't knock that one down either. On the run is Robert. She lays it in. Then Cognetta, another drive to the basket. She puts it up and in. McBride goes up. She can't hit it. Then again, Jill Rytrowski turns it over. Eastern sloppy play throughout in this one. McCord hits a jumper here, but it's way too late. Another turnover goes through. Naffy's legs. Eastern loses this one 48-35. However, thanks to a UMass Boston loss, or UMass Boston win, excuse me, uh, beating UMass Dartmouth, the Warriors are still tied for first place, headed into the big matchup with the Corsairs this Saturday. I'm sorry, a common phrase a lot of us use every day. But for Alex Rodriguez, it was an apology the New York Yankees are hoping can end a lot of drama. A-Rod met with the Yankees organization Tuesday and apologized for all the off-field drama he's caused over the past two years. The Yankees told the media uh, that the meeting went very well and they plan on having the 39-year-old third baseman speak to the media before spring training starts. Let the fun begin, Yankees fans. Wait, that's not it. Alex Rodriguez also said he plans on going after Barry Bonds' home run record. Really? You haven't played in a year and you turn 40. Be realistic, Alex. It'll be inter interesting to see if Rodriguez could prove me and many others wrong this season. George Carl, former head coach of the Denver Nuggets, is making his return after the All-Star break. 
However, Carl will become the head coach of the Sacramento Kings. Although they're a young team, Carl's head coaching experience could up the Kings in the second half. Sticking in the Western Conference, how about James Harden? Yes, fear the beard. It seems like Harden is going off for 40 points every other night. The Houston Rockets guard is becoming one of the elite scorers in the game, and his team isn't too bad as well. The Rockets are in third place in the Western Conference, only three games behind the Memphis Grizzlies in second. With Dwight Howard injured, we'll see how long the Rockets can stay near the top of the conference. That's all for sports. I'm Nick Akinfora. And that's it for this week's show. Thank you, Nick, for that awesome sports update. But if you want to see any of our past shows, visit the ETV YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in next week. Have a great night, and have an amazing Valentine's Day in romantic Willimantic.